this mutation is called Medieval Times and it is being played on Scythe of Amon. We have two mutators active, we have Black Death, we have Transmutation. So, you will notice that player 2 is very very weird on this overlay. And this is because player 2 does not exist. Player 2 is just a dummy and uh, yeah, player 2 is just a dummy, which can sometimes also happen in Rock Slopping Champions. But uh, this is basically a mutation solo by uh, Lilaren and those of you that know Lilaren will know that they are one of the uh, prominent speedrunners in, uh, in the co-op community and they will be doing a mutation solo with the Raynor. So uh, that is why uh, that is... Uh, that is why player 2 is actually blank, because player 2 is non-existent. And this is obviously being done on a custom co-op map, so there's full disclosure over there, but this is a legit, uh, this is a legit mutation solo. So, we're gonna have a look at the masteries over here. Uh, they have gone for the research cost uh, reduction, they've gone 50-50 into the Banshee airstrike and uh, the uh, Hyperion cooldown, and then they've put a full 30 points into the medic heal mastery over there. Production wise we can see that they are already starting to put uh, down their barracks over here and uh, they will have to deal with the first deck wave uh, as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. Now um, the most probably the scariest mutator over here is the uh, transmutation mutator because transmutation means every single time you lose a unit bad stuff is going to happen to you and it means that uh, Amon's use is going to get a little bit stronger uh, throughout the course of that. Uh, the other thing to also note is that um, well, my camera keeps getting uh, center upgrade completed. There we go. So uh, the other thing to also note is uh, that when you uh, when you do have this um, when you lose an when you use a unit when you lose a unit to transmutation, uh, Amon's units are just going to tech, uh, climb up the tech layer and they'll just get a little bit stronger and you know they'll convert into some other units that are a little bit more nasty. And that combined with Black Death means you're using units left, right, and center. Uh, it is just all all bad if you uh, if you are playing a commander like Raynor, uh, that uh, unit. It relies on constant attrition of units to overwhelm the enemy, so uh, efficiency is going to be key over here. And now the first attack wave is coming up, and uh, the Banshee airstrike will be ready to go and one shot the rest of this. Uh, here. So that's pretty much a perfect one shot to these Banshees, and uh, now these Banshees are going to make their way here and start harassing this enemy base. Uh, Amon will try and send some detection, but in the meanwhile. Uh, they will be able to clean up the side uh, without too many problems over here, focus down onto that, uh, onto the missile turret. And you can see there is Avon's detection that is being sent, and there's one fire bat here that decides to uh, give a little bit of attitude to the Banshees, but uh, that ends up getting cleaned up, and now these Banshees are going to be setting up here. Now, the one thing to note is, if you send these Banshees over here, and there is definitely a lot of detection there, um, what can happen is you could end up losing your Banshees, and uh, the uh, the units will uh, start to attack uh, your base. So the transmutative units will actually start to attack your base. So this is why you do not want your uh, your banshees just running into a sliver over there because they're not going to end up taking out that sliver. So now we have a hyperion that gets dropped here. This hyperion is going to start uh, harassing the sliver, and uh, I believe it should have more than enough DPS to take out this void sliver without too many problems. And the reason why the, they are clearing out the sliver first is because this sliver is the hardest. And as you progress through the mission, uh, you know, it, it will always be the hardest sliver and you want to deal with as few units as you, uh, you possibly want. You can see here that there are some there are two point defense drones that get dropped to take out to reduce the effect of these mule over here. And now the, uh, the Hyperion gets uh, tactical jumped. Uh, out of the way, I believe, or it actually ended up uh, finishing with its uh, with its cooldown over there. That's actually kind of impressive. But uh, there you go. That is why you have the. Um, that is why you are attacking the sliver first. It's because uh, you do not want to deal with you know a billion battle cruisers and 500 carriers in the while you're pushing that last one because that is how you end up losing the game. Up. So. Uh, it does mean that Raynor is going to be on one base, but Raynor is one of those commanders that doesn't really uh, that doesn't really suffer very much being on one base because they have access to the mules, and as long as they have a healthy economy, uh, they will have uh, uh, as long as they have enough command centers, they will have a healthy economy over here. We have a bunch of vultures now that have been dropped here, and they'll be some putting down some spire mines to deal with. Uh, with the attack waves and uh, whatever random trickle that spawns as a result of uh, 
any harass that occurs. Because now this bonus objective is going to go towards this... Um, uh, this this war prism is going to go towards this bonus area, and it's going to start to taking a little bit of damage uh, from some of the units over here. Unfortunately, there is a hybrid that has spawned uh, as a result here, which will means that it will not end up getting taken out. As soon as this hybrid uh, changes into one of the major hybrids, so you're talking about a hybrid behemoth or a hybrid dominator, the hybrid dominator will get picked off by there. There we go. That's exactly what I was talking about. Unfortunately, it does have the Black Death Mutator as well. Flake. But uh, there you go. You can see this attacker just gets completely deleted by the Spire Mines. And once this Hybrid Dominator de aggros, it will move towards the side. And uh, everything else is just going to end up getting picked off here. So Hybrid Dominator is going to start waking its way here. And instantly just gets one shot by the rest of the Spire Mines here. There is a bunch of Cyclones here. But the Cyclone does end up getting picked off as well. And now Raynor is just slowly taking up. He's climbing up the tech tree, making sure that everything is okay before they do the next engage and uh, they have four minutes left before the uh, the mission is a loss so just making sure that they have enough spire mines in this location just to, to be able to hold off any of the random harass that occurs so now the next attack wave has spawned so they're just going to reinforce with a few more spire mines just to make sure that nothing bad happens to them or their ally uh, you do not want transmutation getting out of control it's very very easy to uh, to underestimate how quickly Amon's units can get uh, the, can evolve through uh, transmutation. So well, just make sure you have space. enough uh, Spire Mines in position. Uh, it's very, very important over here. Hyperion will be up in 20 seconds. So we'll see what the next plan is over here. Add-ons all done. And production wise, yeah, we just only have the attack upgrades coming up and a few siege tanks being made. And now the attack wave is probably actually gonna end up splitting. But now we have the Hyperion in position here, and there is another Yamato cannon that gets dropped. And, you know, onto this voice over here. There's another Banshee airstrike as well that gets dropped to uh, deal with this attack wave will probably get evaporated by these fire mines here. So I'm just gonna keep focus on this void slivers so you have to end up dealing with this. Remember that as you go as you take out void slivers the amount of uh, shields that the Void Slivers have goes up. So now it's at 6,000 shield with the 1,500 base HP that all Void Slivers have. So the Void Slivers do get more and more difficult uh, to take out as time goes on, but it seems that the, there's uh, just more than enough DPS to deal with that, and everything just gets moved out of the way to make sure that uh, no enemy units are attacking any of these uh, any of these heroic units over here, because that is how you get a hybrid dominator in your face. So there we go. Those are the next. Uh, that is the next voice lever out, and now it's just basically a matter of time before Raynor needs the next uh, waits for the next type period here. Uh, meanwhile, production wise, uh, Raynor is going for uh, armor upgrades. As well, and that will make it will increase the amount of uh, damage output and the amount of uh, survivability for his uh, for his units here. So he's going for the mech attack upgrades. He's going for the uh, the armor upgrades for infantry, and he's already queued up the uh, next uh, infantry up, uh, attack upgrade as well. So let's see what the plan is here as uh, Tan goes on, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of siege tanks are made just to completely hold the side out. And um, Our upgrades complete. so far, the two hardest Void Slovers have been cleared. So uh, in in terms of difficulty, this is the next hardest Void Slover. This is the hardest Void Slover that's left on the map. And then it's the Expo Slover, and then it's your, your base Slover. And this strategy is also used for a lot of speedruns. So, uh, when, uh, when players want to speedrun this mission, they go for these Slovers first, because these ones are the hardest ones to do. And... Uh, you know, as you start clearing slivers, you want the easiest sliver to get stronger. You do not want the hardest sliver to get stronger because that just slows down your uh, your clearing potential as uh, time uh, progresses in this mission. Now we have another attack with it. It's making its way here, and we still have another 120 seconds before the Hyperion comes out. So we'll probably get to see uh, how uh, these uh, how Reyna will uh, engage the next sliver because remember the Void Sliver HPs go uh, the, the Void Sliver shields go up as you clear Void Slivers from the map, so they get a little bit more tanky, and eventually the Hyperion is not going to be able to uh, single-handedly take out a Void Sliver by itself, so um, we'll see how they, choose to, how, how they choose to deal with this, and then this next War Prism is on the way, and that will also get cleaned up. They get lots of uh, hybrids end up spawning, and they just get completely deleted by the uh, by the units over there, and they, they just, just completely clear out that attack wave. Uh, Few more units over here, but again, there's one high Templar that decides to give these siege tanks a little bit of an attitude. That hybrid nemesis is a little bit annoying, but eventually it will transmute, 
and uh, it'll get converted into something else and uh, that will be uh, okay. The two carriers over here that will get a little bit annoying over here, but uh, that hybrid ends up getting picked off. Actually, surprisingly, without any, uh, without being converted into something else, and now this war prism is going to end up getting taken out, and I think there is the hybrid dominator that is here, and now it'll make its way towards the player's base. So the one thing to note about transmutation is when a unit transmutates, it will be given an attack command towards the player's base. So you can't really go and snipe, some, snipe your objective and then run away. Uh, that Any units that uh, have been transmutated will be converted back, and uh, that is something else to take into consideration. Notice how the siege tank has been pulled away to make sure that it does not uh, infect some of the other stuff here. And the cyber dominator is going to have a really bad day as well. There's the lurker that is left over here, and now this lurker is going to get picked off as well. Tries to burrow, and then burrow, and now we have another uh, set of uh, harassment that has been dropped over here. There are a bunch of banshee airstrikes to get dropped onto this uh, voice level with the hyperion as well as providing backup, and now they're just going to start focus firing down this lever. I think attack. it might actually be more than enough. Notice how they're at like 8,000 shields now, so... And that is something else we'll take into consideration. Unfortunately, there is a hybrid that has spawned and uh, it is taking a little bit of damage, but uh, it ends up getting picked off here. And I think there might be more than enough. Yeah, there's more than enough damage output here. Uh, tactical jump onto that. Uh, onto that Hyperion just to get these units out of the way. But one of the important things is to make one of the important things to make sure is like you, your heroic units do not get picked off by uh, an enemy unit. If a heroic unit dies to an enemy unit, that enemy unit will get transmitted all the way up to either a hybrid dominator or a hybrid behemoth. So you want to avoid that as much as possible, which is why these units are getting pulled away. Um, additionally, also, you know, you do not want to tactical jump your Hyperion, which is now infected with Black Death, into the middle of your mineral line. That seems very, very obvious, but I have seen it being done on the random queue, and uh, it is not a very good, exp it's not a very pleasant experience for both parties. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So now there's a Hype Diplar over here that is. I think aggro over here. There will be a trickle spawn as a result of that last harass here, but the goal now is just deal with this attack wave, and I think for the most part, the attack wave has been cleared out. There is one hybrid that is left over here, and it's getting shredded by the siege tank. A few more lurkers, and any other ground unit that will come up here will end up getting cleaned up as well by the rest of this thing. You can see there's a liberator over here, but this liberator is not going to be able to siege up a four time is uh, before it ends up going down to the bunkers that are set up on this side. So... Uh, Again, there's a little bit of harass here onto these uh, onto this uh, point defense drone. I think there was a siege tank that will also be making its way here. Again, no big deal. Lots of uh, siege tanks just hodoring this position, and uh, now it's basically Raynor just waiting for the next Hyperion cooldown to come up before he uh, is able to engage this next Void Slugger over here. Just 100% hodor on the side, and just using call downs to deal with these Void Sluggers, and a lot of skill being utilized. Make sure they do not end up getting wrecked by uh, the attack waves or the random trickle spawn. Yeah, there's a siege tank that had spawned from that upper void sliver over there. And it looks like, yeah, they're going for their level 3 attack upgrades. I don't know if the attack upgrades will be ready before the Hyperion ends up spawning, but uh, they are getting relatively close here. Yeah, that, that, that uh, attack wave, that attack uh, upgrade is not going to be ready for the 4th void sliver. Definitely will be for the 5th void sliver, which will provide, again, another damage boost for these units over here. And yeah, we have just a bunch of marines at the back as well. I think the marines are there just to uh, deal with any random air unit that ends up uh, being created as a result of the transmutation. And now there's another attack wave that is making its way towards the allies' base here. And again, lots of uh, spire mines, so that should be more than enough. There will be hybrids that will be accompanying this, so it might be better. To, I think there, these spire mines might have to be a little bit reinforced. Uh, to make sure that they are able to completely clean up that attack where you do not want stuff surviving uh, as a result here. So these vultures are going to be replenishing their spire mines and they will be ready to go. And they might be doing a little bit of small reinforcements on this side. And to clean out that side there is unfortunately a Loki that ends up getting spawned on here. Another bunch of units here, the attack of has ended up splitting, but for the most part they end up getting cleared out. Hybrid Dominator, the Loki gets converted to a Hybrid Dominator, which was a little bit of a bad idea because the Hybrid Dominator then gets, is able to get attacked. Again, that unit gets killed, that Loki uh, cast a Yamato on, I think, I'll one of the Siege Tanks, here. gets converted to a Hybrid Dominator and gets deleted by the rest of these attack waves. And now it's only a matter of time before this Broodlord gets converted to something else as well. And uh, we'll see what happens over there. Uh, the, okay, so the Marines have been moved forward now, they're just trying to try take out this Broodlord before it deals. Before it does something very, very stupid that would cause a problem like this, for example. Now it's a Tempest. 
which is kind of annoying as well. And now this Tempest is going to start harassing the side and uh, harassing there as well. And now we have the Banshee airstrike as well and the Hyperion that gets dropped. Again, the Banshees are more than enough to be able to take out this with the Hyperion's backup. And that Void Sliver is gone while uh, there was a focus on here deal with this deck with as well. So there's a lot of multitasking that's required, obviously, if you are uh, going to try and solo a mutation. But it just goes to show you that it is doable, and it goes to show you that Raynor OP, very very OP when he when he's up against the right enemy composition over right here, which uh, in this case is the classic uh, uh, the classic infantry. We have a few more trickle now spawns that are coming up from that last void sliver, but uh, nothing that Raynor can't handle. And now we are just waiting for the next Hyperion cooldown, which is going to be in 180 seconds, and I am going to attempt to entertain you with random casting. And random facts like look at how many minerals that Raynor has uh, mined so far. He's mined a total of 24k minerals. So that is, it's not the amount of minerals that the mules have obtained. Uh, it's just the total amount of minerals that uh, that Raynor has uh, has acquired throughout the course of this game. Uh, Raynor is already ready to deal with the attack wave that is coming up his way, so he should not really have too many problems. Mineral He's already at the level point. three attack upgrades as well. He's just going for the armor upgrades now. Just make his units a little bit tankier, give him a little bit more HP as well, and the units of Raynor's upgrades provide HP buffs as well, so just making him a little bit more resilient. And now, uh, yeah, he's gonna move his Vultures out of the way to get ready for this attack wave, and this attack wave should have no, like, these... What might actually happen is this attack wave might end up, end up getting cleared out, and some of the defenders on the side will also end up getting uh, deleted because of these Spire Mines, because they'll start chaining to all this stuff here. So you can see this hybrids end up getting cleared out very, very quickly, and now there's just basically a bunch of Spire Mines that are unfortunately left over on this side and whatever is left here now to start making its way here there's a banshee airstrike that gets dropped just provides a little bit more damage output to oh yeah. some of these units that over here some mid mines as well some random swarm hosts but uh, that will end up uh, again getting cleaned up without too many problems focus fire down on some of the marines to take out that one annoying brood lord there and now there's another attack wave that is making its way towards the uh, towards the base here and it should oh yeah. be um, that upgrade's finished there's gonna be a little bit of delay i think maybe on this side um, before, because the Hyperion is going to be out before the Banshee airstrike is going to be there. There's uh, there's about two minutes left before the Banshee airstrike can come down again. Uh, there we go. The Banshees do end up flying into the air, and now there's another attack wave that is coming up. And I think there should be more than enough uh, mines on this side. It's not really too much of a problem here to put down bunkers because most of these units are going to get cleared out by uh, just the spire mines. One of the reasons why there are bunkers also set up on this side is because when the attack waves come up here, they end up chaining into the units that are guarding this Void Sliver, and inevitably they will get killed off by something, and you will end up with a few more air units that will be harassing that side. So you can see over here, it's not really too much of a problem. Uh, Hybrid Dominator is in position now, Hybrid Dominator is now gone completely, oh no, he's still alive! It does end up casting a storm on this side. Uh, there is no defenses on uh, here. That okay, there is that hybrid dominator gun, but now there is a liberator here, which will start to, to siege up this uh, base. But again, there is a focus fire down here. A few carriers as well that are starting to harass here. And now Raynor's army, I think he's going to start just completely pushing in. Uses the Hyperion, gives his marines a little bit extra range as well. As a result, there's a Loki that ends up getting created as a result of the transmutation, but it ends up getting cleaned up as well. A few vultures as well joining into the mix here to provide a little bit of extra DPS here. There's a hybrid behemoth as well that ends up getting created. Saving the unit that was being uh, focused fired down. But now that Void Rift is uh, getting taken out, but unfortunately the Death Group Crystal is... Uh, is uh, harassing uh, Raynor's units over here, but now there's just a full focus fire down here. Unfortunately, some of Raynor's units does get picked up by the uh, by the Circle of Doom ability here, but uh, that is the Void Sliver's HP gone because it's just full focus fire down from the Banshee airstrike and the Hyperion, and that is GG.